What's that quote? Ah, yes. Revenge can be sweet, but forgiveness is sweeter. Well, throw that out the window. Nothing is sweeter than an ice cold plate of passive aggressive revenge. From filling your ex's hot tub with poop to projecting Shrek onto your douchebag landlord's house, I've got everything your petty vengeance-fueled heart desires. So buckle up, because it's time for even more passive-aggressive ways people got revenge. <laughs> 20 Tons of Vengeance as a civilian, you'd like to think our politicians are above petty acts of vengeance, right? Ha! As if. Back in 2011, Danny Laravere, the mayor of a small town in Quebec, Canada, was growing tired of the lengthy divorce proceedings he was going through with his ex-wife, Isabel. Apparently, he felt unduly harassed by her excessive demands. Rather than approach the situation in an adult manner, however, Danny decided to exercise his passive-aggressive muscles. Just what I like to hear. The mayor waited until his ex's birthday, then got in touch with an excavation company that he owned and asked them to bring him a huge 20-ton rock. Okay. Once the boulder arrived, he attached some pink ribbon onto it and spray-painted it with a birthday greeting. Then he waited until nighttime, drove the rock over to her house on a front-end loader, and carefully offloaded the entire hulking thing onto her drive, completely blocking access to her house. Unsurprisingly, Isabel was absolutely livid when she woke up and saw the monstrosity the next morning. Indeed, she was forced to enlist professionals and the police to help get rid of it. I'm sure they had questions. As for why Danny chose a rock, apparently Isabel had always wanted one, though I suspect she meant a diamond on her finger, not a boulder on her drive. Pooh done it. One of my pet peeves is dog owners not cleaning up after their pets. Like, come on, it's really not that hard. Usually, you only have to deal with random dog poop on the sidewalk or in a public park, though. Not in your own backyard. So Ashley McKay from Adelaide, Australia was fuming when he stepped out of his house to see a freshly lain turd smack bang in the middle of his lawn. Not content to let the owner get away with this vile act of sabotage, he went back inside and checked over his CCTV footage. Sure enough, there was the culprit a fluffy little white hound, doing the poop in question while its owner watched on nonplussed. Well, unfortunately for the doo-doo desperado, Ashley recognized her and knew where she lived. Without wasting any more time, he grabbed a bag and an envelope, went back outside, and transferred the turd delicately into its new paper-bound home. Then he sealed the envelope with a little note and posted it through her letterbox. Boom. Lo and behold, his lawn's been safe ever since. Turns out the only things more annoying than junk mail are poop parcels. And if you don't want a poop parcel in your letterbox, head down and hit those like and subscribe buttons. I'm always uploading amazing videos and it's the only way to guarantee you won't miss any. Okay, I probably won't post you poop if you don't, but why take the chance? Right, what's next? Vengeance is green. There's an old saying, don't mess with a man with a projector, especially not one that loves Shrek. Well, one landlord obviously hadn't heard that saying. The landlord in question kicked out one of his tenants without warning them and then wouldn't even let them return to pack up their stuff. Little did they know they'd just kicked out TikToker, that projector guy, and he had an overwhelming thirst for vengeance. Our guy waited until nighttime before using a powerful portable projector to blast the first Shrek movie all across the apartment building. Apparently, this show of defiance didn't work the first time, so he continued to project everyone's favorite ogre for the next few nights, increasing both the brightness and volume. Now, you'd think this might make the landlord relent, but nope, he still denied that projector guy his stuff back. Wow. So the TikToker took it a step further by going to his landlord's actual house and projecting the emoji movie onto it at max brightness and volume. I guess he realized it's impossible for Shrek to ever be annoying. Unfortunately, even that didn't work. And our hero is still, at the time I'm releasing this, without his precious possessions. Not that that stopped him. Towards the end of 2023, he came up with another devious plan, projecting scary people onto his former apartment building to put people off renting there. Ha! It'd definitely work on me. 
As of right now, that's the latest news we have on his vengeful shenanigans. Over the line. Neighbors have the potential to be either best friends or worst enemies. Unfortunately for main construction worker Gabriel Braun, the latter was true. Gabriel and his family had been in a years-long disagreement with their next-door neighbors, the Ritters, over where the property line between their two plots of land was. Essentially, both thought they owned more land than the other. Things came to a head when the Brons brought in a land surveyor who told them the property line fell right through the center of the Ritters' garage. In other words, part of their garage was on Gabriel's land. In response, the youngest of the Ritters, Blake, started throwing trash, smashed glass, and even old furniture into the bronze yard. Gabriel was, as you might imagine, pretty peeved about this. But being a construction worker, he had both the tools and the know-how to exact the perfect revenge. Grabbing a machine-powered saw, Gabriel hopped into a truck-mounted crane he owned. Yes, this is going nuclear. Then he positioned himself above the garage roof and started sawing into it precisely at the property line. Some delicate handiwork later and one knock with the crane was all it took to bring a perfectly sliced third of the garage crashing down. I mean, wow. This is the wildest neighborly dispute I've ever seen. Gabriel's probably gonna have to pay damages for his actions, but remained steadfast that there was no better solution. Hmm, whether you agree with him or not, I'll put it to you this way. The Ritters didn't make any trouble ever again. Stinky Booty Being able to order something online and receive it the very next day is one of the wonders of modern living. Sometimes the courier might leave it on your doorstep, though, where it's a sitting duck for package thieves. Yes, these despicable porch pirates exist, something one Colorado mom found out the hard way back in 2019. Because there was no good place for couriers to leave them, she'd had a whopping 20 packages stolen from her porch since living at her current home. After the latest robbery, however, she decided enough was enough. In a flash of vengeful inspiration, our mischievous mom dug out some old Amazon packages, emptied the contents of her garbage can into them, and sealed them up securely so they looked brand new. Then she put them on her front porch and waited. Sure enough, the next day, the garbage-filled boxes were gone. Since then, our heroic homeowner has offloaded at least another two lots of detritus to unsuspecting thieves. Ooh, I'd love to have seen their faces when they tore open the parcels only to be greeted with kitty litter and cigarette butts. Yep, the closest thing to booty those pirates got was a bunch of used diapers. Driven to vengeance. Cars. People get very precious about them. So if a proud car owner commits the cardinal sin of peeing the wrong person off, there's one possession that's guaranteed to see the brunt of their vengeance. Over in Cleveland, Ohio, back in 2022, one such car owner cheated on his girlfriend. After she found out, she knew exactly how to hit him where it hurts. I mean, seriously, just look at this. What in Wolverine's claws happened here? Well, supposedly she keyed his car. But I'm sorry, if a mere key did that, then the manufacturer must have also been responsible for Thor's hammer. Well, after a little digging, I've got to the bottom of it. Take a look at this and see if anything seems familiar. Yeah, see how those scratches on the car line up? It's an ad from the video game Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. Ahaha. <laughs> So it seems that after filming, the prop car was left on the side of the road and this whole cheating story was made up by a passerby looking for internet clout. To be honest, I feel safer sleeping at night knowing a wronged Wolverine isn't actually out there somewhere. Across the pond in Devon, UK, a bitter ex took it out on his former partner by doing this to her car. So this has been done again by the same people that done it last time. No, it's not trolls off TikTok. It's Jasmine's dead ex-friends and ex-partner. Crikey. Were those cheese slices? Supposedly, this isn't the first time the food bombing had happened either. I'm guessing it wasn't the most amicable of breakups, but it's unclear if the angry ex had any good reason to be this petty. The woman who owns the car is a TikToker and her content is a wholesome blend of food and family stuff. My guess? Her ex was just seething with jealousy. Whatever the reason, the point remains, if you've got someone on a warpath after you, hide your car. Acoustic Exhibitionists 
One of the most common and annoying downsides to living in an apartment is that if you have noisy neighbors, it's pretty much impossible to escape the racket. So your best option is to fight back. One Reddit user came up with a creative solution to their neighbor problem using a hammer, a motor, and a power bank. <laughs> That's genius. Another peeved apartment owner took revenge on his loud upstairs neighbor by taping his stereo to the ceiling. Don't get me wrong, that's good, but it's far from the best revenge I've seen on rowdy neighbors. That prize goes to TikToker Joshua Medina. He shared a wall with somebody that consistently kept him awake, blasting music until all kinds of unholy hours. After one particularly bad night in January 2022, Joshua snapped and decided to take his own back. He blasted his speaker through the wall for eight whole hours while he was at work. Yet just days later, the neighbor was back at it. In fact, she was being so loud that he was forced to move his bed into the living room just to get some sleep. To make things worse, after he confronted her about it the next day, she called him a homophobic slur. It was time to turn things up a notch. Joshua went out the next day and bought himself a much bigger speaker before playing a far more annoying song. Six hours later, he finally turned it off, but only for the night. Joshua kept playing music for the next three days and culminated the whole affair by inviting his friends around to make even more noise. If you thought it was over though, even that wasn't enough for Joshua. He decided to move out and as a final goodbye, blared Rick Astley's never gonna give you up for a whopping 10 hours. That's less of a Rick roll and more of a Rick steamroll. Hot tub grime machine. Breakups can be messy. Something 64 year old Rene Daniel from Quebec, Canada made all too literal after his wife handed him their divorce papers back in 2013. You see, Rene is a farmer and farmers have access to a lot of manure. Any ideas where this is going yet? Well, straight after he was handed the papers, old Rene scurried off outside and his wife didn't see him for a good few minutes. Until that is, she heard strange noises near the front of the house. When she went to investigate, she was shocked. Rene was hard at work tipping huge buckets of stinky cow manure into their hot tub. She immediately called the police, but by the time they got there, the tub was absolutely full of the muck, and Rene wasn't about to be arrested so easily. As soon as he saw the cops, the 64-year-old jumped into his tractor and started driving off as fast as he could. Only it turns out, this wasn't very fast. Police ran after him as he trundled away and it didn't take long for them to catch up, pepper spray the fleeing man and remove him from the vehicle. Jeez. As well as this rather uncomfortable experience, Rene faced over $5,000 in fines for the whole ordeal. Was it worth it? Of course it was. Am I bugging you? Sorting a new driving license or passport is one of those tedious things we all have to do at some point. One American from Montana had it harder than most though. While waiting for his identification documents to be reissued, he'd prepaid to stay in a hotel within his state. Only when he tried to check in with a temporary driving license, the hotel refused him his room. Despite being legally able to fly domestically without a passport and showing them his credit card and expired IDs, the staff told him that he had to leave. What's more, they wouldn't even offer him a refund. Unable to sway them, our Montana man was forced to find a room elsewhere, but he didn't forget about being wronged. Oh no. The next day, he returned to the first hotel, this time carrying a special surprise. He'd bought a huge poster board and written, this hotel has bed bugs on it in Sharpie. Then he stood outside the entrance holding the sign. Before even a minute had passed, motorists were already slowing down, honking their horns and asking if it was true. And he was more than happy to confirm to them. It was going even better than anticipated. 15 minutes later, the woman who'd refused him his refund came outside begging him to leave. Ha, ah, how the tides have turned. Our man stayed strong, wasting the woman's time as long as he could until he eventually agreed to leave on one condition, a full refund and a good two hours later after he first arrived, he got exactly what he wanted. Though not before depriving the hotel of hundreds of dollars worth of business. Ouch, that must have hurt more than any bed bug. Workplace wrath. 
If you've ever had a job, you've had a workplace nemesis. I mean, come on, nobody gets along with everyone they work with. Traditional forms of vengeance might get you fired though. So the office is where passive aggression thrives. Take one Redditor who got back at an annoying coworker by making them a delicious coffee using a tub of Papa John's garlic butter. Ugh. I imagine they mix the atrocious butter water with actual coffee before handing it to them. I'm gagging just thinking about it. Blech. Elsewhere, one officer worker took offense when their colleague told them they had no holiday spirit. So to show him just how wrong he was, they waited until he'd left and wrapped his entire workspace in wrapping paper. Oh, oh, oh dear. In pole position though, we have a man who goes by Chef Schwasti online. Chef had grown tired of his narcissistic coworker who's the kind of person who makes every conversation about himself regardless of the topic. So Chef snuck a small Bluetooth speaker in the air conditioning vent above the annoying guy's desk. Then he repeatedly played the Bee Gees Stayin' Alive on just low enough volume that only Mr. Annoying would be able to hear it. And boy, it worked. He knew he was being pranked, but had no idea how or who was behind it. With no choice but to sit there and take it, the annoying coworker got more and more frustrated until at the end of the day, he finally snapped, cursed the whole office, and stormed out. It probably didn't stop him being such a self-obsessed jerk, but it did give Chef a whole ton of satisfaction. A woman spurned. Relationships can be difficult, especially if you find out your partner is married to somebody else. Well, that was exactly the kind of insane difficulty 41-year-old Yavani Wilkins faced back in 2009. After receiving an anonymous tip, she realized the man she thought she'd been in a monogamous relationship with had actually been married for the whole eight and a half years. What? But don't worry, Yavani had a devious plan to inflict her revenge. You see, the man in question was Charles Phillips, a technology executive and advisor to none other than President Obama. So he was pretty big stuff. And Yavani wasn't exactly a small fry either. She had a lot of money tucked away enough to cause absolute chaos for her ex-boyfriend. Indeed, Yovani spent nearly $200,000 on several huge billboards, each featuring a picture of the ex-couple with their names and a link to a website. The reason the boards were so expensive? Yovani paid for them to be displayed all over New York and San Francisco. One was even set up over Times Square, one of the busiest parts of New York City. Whoa. Within seconds of them going live, they were all anybody was talking about, and it wasn't hard to figure out what they meant. If you followed the website link, it led to a page full of photos from the entire affair. Boat trips, nights out, even a vast collection of love letters. Damn, Charles had been well and truly outed, and there were some big consequences. Despite somehow keeping his marriage, the shamed statesman was forced to resign from both his technology position and from the president's council. Oof. Yavani has no regrets though, saying her revenge made her feel significant again after such a crushing blow. What do you think? The perfect vengeance or a step too far? Let me know in the comments below. Toilet Paper Terrorize If you've never heard of toilet papering, consider yourself lucky. It's an annoying and wasteful prank where the pranksters cover someone's house or yard with thousands of sheets of toilet paper. This act of vandalism doesn't always go unpunished though. When Matthew Dean and his family moved into their Utah home back in 2014, they were quickly targeted by a group of kids who kept throwing sheets of the stuff all over their house. The gang of youths would also bang on their windows at night and generally be massive pains in the backside. When some of the culprits were caught by police, however, the Deans decided against pressing charges. Instead, they did something quite unexpected, asked them to donate their remaining rolls to a food bank. Eh? That's not justice, I hear you say. Well, the deans went on to start a campaign asking locals to donate more rolls, and the effort went viral. Within weeks, over a thousand rolls had been donated to help those in need. That's great and everything, but how is it getting revenge on the troublemakers? Well, the whole affair exposed just how stupid they looked to the entire community while also forcing them to turn their prank into something that actually helped people. Safe to say the pranksters felt so embarrassed by it all that they stopped terrorizing the deans and slunk back into the shadows from whence they came, all without any legal action. I just hope none of that donated toilet paper was used. Half Measure 
I've always said if you're gonna take revenge on someone, don't make it a half measure. But back in 2008, 76-year-old Serb farmer Branko Zivkov proved me wrong. He was at the end of a messy divorce with his ex-wife and during court proceedings, the judge ruled he had to give her half of all his property. As a farmer, that included his work equipment. Without much choice, Branko reluctantly agreed to the proposal. But if they thought he was going to just hand over half the tools he needed to earn a living, they were very wrong. Branko went home that evening and picked up an industrial angle grinder, basically a super powerful handheld machine with a spinning disc that can cut through metal. Then he walked out onto his farm and got to work, by which I mean he cut in half all of the farming equipment he possibly could. As well as smaller tools like shovels, Branko ruthlessly sliced through huge objects like cattle scales, a harrow, and even a massive crop sewing machine. Nothing was safe. Hours of hard work later and the deed was done, much to the horror of his ex-wife. If he couldn't use it, nobody could. So yeah, he took half a measure, all right. But damn, it was just as effective as a full one. Pool Payback by now, I think it's pretty obvious that being neighbors does not mean being friends. One homeowner had a neighbor whose dog would constantly dig under the fence and deposit huge poops on the lawn. No matter how many times our protagonist complained, nothing would ever change, and he was always forced to pick them up himself, until one day he got an idea. The negligent neighbor had a fancy outdoor pool and terrace area, so the wronged man decided against picking up the trespassing turds for a week or so until there were around a dozen on his lawn. Then he knew it was the time to strike. He went outside, picked up one of the poops and launched it into the neighbor's backyard. One satisfying plop later and he knew it found its target. But that was only the beginning. He grabbed another poop and slung that one into the neighbor's pool too, then another, then another. It wasn't until all 12 of the muck missiles had successfully met their target that he finally ended the barrage. Then he peered over the fence to admire his handiwork. The pool was in absolute state. Just at that moment, the neighbor came out of his house demanding to know what the heck he was doing. Our guy didn't need to say anything. The neighbor's eyes found his pool and his jaw dropped. Legend has it, he never let his dog dig under the fence again. United Breaks Guitars If you like traveling, you'll know what I mean when I say planes can be hell. From delayed flights to loud, messy passengers, it's a relief when you finally step off at your destination. But after taking a seat on his plane, singer-songwriter Dave Carroll was more concerned about what was happening outside. Through his window, he saw the baggage handlers throwing his $3,500 guitar into the hold like it was a sack of potatoes. Panicking, he got the attention of the flight attendant, but she just told him that it wasn't her problem. After bringing it up with two other members of staff to no avail, he had no choice but to sit back down and wait until the flight was over. When they landed in Omaha, however, it was past midnight and Dave was exhausted, so he grabbed his guitar and went to his hotel without checking it. It was only when he got to his sound check the next day that he took it out of its case and realized it was utterly smashed. So he got in touch with the airline he'd flown with, United, and explained the situation to them. But their response was the same as before. They didn't care. In fact, they wouldn't even take responsibility for the damage. Eventually, he managed to make a claim, but months and months of calls and emails later and Dave was no closer to getting his money back than when he'd started. It was infuriating. In agonizing nine months on, Dave realized United had designed their entire system around frustrating customers into giving up. He was never going to get that claim. And that's when the passive-aggressive goblin inside him awoke. With a satisfied smile, Dave knew what he had to do. In July 2009, he released the song United Breaks Guitars as a free download. The lyrics detailed the entire fiasco with a scathing refrain of, I should have flown with someone else or gone by car because United Breaks Guitars. Spicy. To his surprise, it quickly became YouTube's most watched music video of the month. Dave shot to stardom and his terrible experience with the airline reached millions upon millions of people. It had gone better than he ever could have hoped. United, shocked and humiliated, were forced to apologize to Dave and offered him $3,000 compensation. But it was far too little, far too late. The public relations disaster reportedly saw United suffer some $180 million in lost revenue in the aftermath. Jeez. Now, United were already struggling before this whole mishap, so Dave wasn't solely responsible for this. 
However, their stock price did fall a whopping 10% soon after, and I'm sure the viral video contributed to it. For one, it had a remarkable reach. It's currently sitting at a colossal 23 million views and counting. Secondly, the blitz of media coverage that surrounded its release created a torrent of public sympathy for Dave and hostility for United, potentially scaring off investors. I think we all stand united in our appreciation of that beautiful act of passive-aggressive vengeance. Phew, that's all the sordid tales of petty mischief I've got for you today. Which did you enjoy the most? Let me know down in the comments, and thanks for watching.